Hello everybody and welcome back to another EDH gameplay here on this channel. Before we get into today's game I want to make a quick shout out to Kaiju Cards in Trier Germany for providing a great place for us where we can play our TCGs. I have done some upgrades to my Vita Trainer Prodigy deck and I'm looking forward to getting some Enrage triggers. Florian is new to this channel and has brought his Salvala Explorer Returned deck which wants to use his parlay ability to generate additional mana and cheat out big threats to swing for the win. Constantine has brought his Gun of the Wild Artifact deck which is played in a very reactive way by flashing in artifacts and generating a lot of value due to double triggers. Christopher has brought his Admiral Brass Unsinkable deck, trying to win with an army of pirates or with a Malcolm Glinton Buccaneer combo. Alright, I'd say let's jump right into the game. Christopher starts us off and plays an island for turn and passes. I draw for my turn, I shock in a stomping grounds and I immediately tap it to cast Wild Growth enchanting my stomping grounds. Afterwards I pass the turn. Florian draws and he casts a Birds of Paradise. He passes the turn, Constantine plays a Plains and passes the turn. Christopher draws, plays a tapped land and passes the turn. I untap, I draw for my turn, I play a Mountain, I tap my Stomping Grounds for 2 mana and I cast 3 Visits. I shock in a Temple Garden and I tap 2 to cast my Paleontologist. Afterwards I pass the turn and Florian untaps. He plays a land for turn and he taps 3 mana total to cast his commander Silvala Explorer Returned. He passes the turn. Constantine draws. He plays a planes. He taps 2 mana to cast a fort vessel. Afterwards he passes the turn. Christopher untaps and draws. He plays a land for turn and he taps a total of 3 mana to cast Malcolm Keen-Eyed Navigator. Afterwards he passes the turn, so I untap, I draw for my turn, play a land for my turn. Afterwards I tap a total of 4 mana to cast Naev of the Dire Hunt. Afterwards I pass the turn, so Florian untaps and draws. He plays a land for turn and then he uses his commander to parlay. We all reveal the top card of our library and two non-land cards are revealed. So he gains 2 life and 2 green mana. We all draw those cards. And he uses one of the green mana to cast an Avacyn's Pilgrim. Afterwards he passes the turn. Constantine untaps and draws. He plays another planes. And then he taps a total of 4 mana to cast a Fram Dynamo. It resolves and afterwards he uses it to cast a Mere Welder. Then he passes the turn, so Christopher untaps and draws. He taps 2 mana to cast Francisco Foul Marauder. He moves to combat and Malcolm attacks Florian in the air. He takes the damage, so Christopher has 2 triggers, he makes a treasure token and he explores a Rakdos Signet into his graveyard. So Francisco gets a plus 1 plus 1 counter. In his second main he plays a land. And then he also casts a Faithless Looting. He draws two cards and he discards two pirates. Afterwards he passes the turn. I untap. I draw for my turn. I play a planes as land for turn. And for free mana I cast my commander, Whiter, Trainer Prodigy. I think for a little bit and then I move to combat and Naive attacks Christopher for free. He takes it and I pass the turn. Florian untaps and draws, he plays a land and then he parlays with his commander. So we all reveal the top card of our library and two non-land cards are revealed. So Florian gains two life and he gains two green mana. He uses it and two of his lands to cast Smothering Tithe. With Smothering Tithe on the stack I tap 3 mana and my commander Whiter Trainer Prodigy, so Naev fights against Malcolm Keenite Navigator. Malcolm dies and Naev triggers so that I draw a card. Afterwards Smothering Tithe resolves. Then he passes the turn so Constantine untaps, he draws for his turn and he doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe. This will happen a lot during this game. Constantine taps a total of 4 mana to cast his own Smothering Tithe. He plays a land, he taps 4 mana to cast the One Ring. With the One Ring on the stack, Florian floats 
one mana and channels Bosejo who endures to destroy Smothering Tithe. Constantine finds a Plains to the Battlefield due to that and then the One Ring resolves. He puts a Burden Counter on it to draw a card and he doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe. In Constantine's end step Christopher flashes in Malcolm, a Loring Scoundrel, by sacrificing a treasure and tapping his Rogue's Passage. Then he goes to his turn, so he untaps, he draws, he doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe, he plays a land for turn, and he taps a total of 5 mana to cast his commander, Admiral Brass Unsinkable. He mills 4 cards on ETB, and 2 of those cards are pirates. Then he moves to combat, and he brings back a hostage taker, exiling the One Ring. He declares his attacks. So Malcolm, a Loring Scoundrel, attacks me, Francesco attacks Constantine, and the hostage taker attacks Florian. Constantine doesn't take any damage due to the One Ring. Christopher loots first with Malcolm and doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe. He explores an island into his hand and a perpetual timepiece into his graveyard, putting a plus one plus one counter on Francisco. Afterwards he passes the turn, so I untap, draw for my turn, I don't pay for smothering tithe, I play a mountainous land for turn, and then I tap 2 mana to cast Expedited Inheritance and afterwards I pass the turn. Florian untaps, he draws for his turn, then he casts a Nyxbloom Ancient by paying 7 mana. It resolves, and then he parlays with his commander. Two non-land cards are revealed this way, so he gains 2 life and 6 green mana total. We all draw the cards on top, and only I pay for Smothering Type this time. Florian plays Gaia's Cradle as land for turn. He taps it to generate 12 more mana, and then he casts a Vorinclex. With Vorinclex on the stack, I float mana and I tap my commander Whiter so that Naev and Paleontologist fight against each other. The fight happens and my Paleontologist dies. And then I have a few triggers. Naev lets me draw a card and Expedited Inheritance lets me exile a total of 10 cards from the top of my library. And this is how we first worked off the stack. And with Vorinclex still on the stack, I float a white mana. Then Vorinclex resolves. Florian uses even more mana of his to cast an Avenger of Zendika. It comes with a total of 5 plant tokens. He uses more treasures and mana to cast Everson, Angel of Hope. So everything on this board is indestructible now. Before he moves phases, I sort to plowshares Francisco for Marauder. It gets exiled and Christopher gains 2 life. Florian passes the turn and Constantine untaps. He draws for turn and doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe. He plays a land for turn and taps a total of 5 mana to cast his commander Gandalf the White. Then he taps 2 more mana to cast Spare Supplies. Due to Gandalf, he draws two cards and he doesn't pay for Smothering Tithe twice. He taps even more mana to cast Oswald Fiddlebender and then he passes the turn. So Christopher untaps and draws for turn. He plays an island as land for turn. He taps two mana and attempts to feed the Swarm Vorinclex. And then he heavily gets reminded that Everson gives it indestructible but due to the spell resolving, he still loses the amount of life, so he goes down to 31. Afterwards, he taps 4 mana to cast Roaming Throne Naming Pirates. 
He moves to combat and he brings back Malcolm, Keynight Navigator and Kaitse Larsenist. Larsenist targets my two creatures, Vorinclex and Avacyn, and Gandalf and Oswald Fiddlebender. I have no response, but Florian uses his treasures to cast Teferi's protection, and so he phases out. Constantine uses his mana to cast Ephemerate, flickering his Oswald. This way my creatures and Gandalf get turned into treasures. And then he goes to declare his attacks. So Hostage Taker and Admiral Brass attack me for a total of 7 and the remaining pirates attack Constantine for a total of 10. We take our damage. Christopher makes a few treasures due to Malcolm and he also filters due to his other Malcolm. And then he passes the turn. I untap. I draw for my turn. I play a land. And then I sacrifice my Naive treasure token to make a green mana. For one mana I cast Out of Exile, Path to Exile, exiling the Larsenist. I have to pay for two ward triggers and I do so, so it gets exiled. This way I get Whiter back. And afterwards I use the floating green mana and free additional to cast Cacophodon. Afterwards I tap my stomping grounds to generate two mana. And I tap my commander using one green mana tapping it so Cacophodon fights against my commander. So I get two Cacophodon triggers untapping my commander and my land and I get four inheritance triggers. I start to exile cards from the top of my library and due to the fact that Cacophodon untaps my commander and my stomping grounds which also always nets me mana will end up in a loop where I can present how I exiled my whole library and I will also use flawless maneuver which I have in hand to make my creatures indestructible. This way I am able to generate infinite mana and I am also able to exile my whole library until I find all of my defensive cards and win cons like Wrathful Raptors, Seedborn Muse and Silverclad Ferocidons. Due to White and Cacophodon having Indestructible, I am now netting infinite mana, will bring those creatures out and Wrathful Raptors will ping down Constantine and Christopher. I keep exiling cards from the top of my library, afterwards I will pass the turn to Florian and in his upkeep I will use some of those cards to make my creatures indestructible again and then repeat this loop to also ping him down. And this is how I win the game. Alright guys, this was another really exciting EDH gameplay and when it comes to the card of the game I definitely have to mention Expedited Inheritance, which on the first look doesn't look like a very powerful mythic card, but especially in a self-fight deck it enables you to generate a ton of value. Especially when Florian casted his Vorinclex and I in response was able to exile 10 cards from the top of my library, which included not only my Cacophodon, but also Swords to Plowshares and Path to Exile, I was able to navigate myself to the win. But another honorable mention definitely has to go out to Smothering Tithe. Not only was it played by two players, but it generated simply so much value for Florian, which is how he was able to generate such a massive board in only one turn, which probably could have killed us if he would have gotten another turn. Alright guys, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Let me know down in the comments below what you think about it. And then I would say, see you in the next one. Goodbye guys.